So today we're going to talk about um, water conservation. We're going to talk a little bit about native pollinators and habitats. Butterflies and bees. Butterflies and bees, the birds yeah. and the bees. And, yeah. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Mariah and, and, you know, how does this bird play into our native habitats? But I really want to introduce you to somebody special. Yeah, bring her in. Come on over here, Miss Smarty Plants. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you get a wing flap just, just hey, because. Hey, San Diego. Well, let's go on and uh, check out the water conservation garden. You bet. Let me tell you Hi, about Mariah. this and the bees and the flowers and See these black dots on the lower set of wings? Yeah. Those are actually glands, and that denotes it as the male. Beautiful. So that butterfly just emerged out of that chrysalis, and its wings are wet, so it needs to hang there for a, a couple of hours for its wings to dry out because butterflies are cold-blooded. So they can't move without um, heat and wet wings, and you notice how it's tucked in underneath those wings. It's, it's so that it doesn't become a predator to birds. So it's hidden in there. That's why they lay their chrysalis. You don't see them very often because they try and hide them. Time you learn about the facts of life. These bats, birds, bees mm -hmm. are all pollinators. So we have a little connection with Mariah who we saw earlier as, as part of this whole ecosystem that butterflies play a huge part in. Right, and it all comes back to our our own food supply, right? These pollinators. Absolutely. Uh, I will tell you this, we wouldn't have as much corn if we didn't have butterflies. Hmm. They're one of the the big pollinators of corn and, and a lot of other things. So the beauty that you see has a deeper message of importance as well because they have a specific place in this ecosystem and they are one of the reasons why it's successful. So this is Mariah, the kestrel falcon, whoa. Uh -huh. <laughs> the American kestrel falcon. And she, uh, as we've been talking about healthy habitats and water conservation for our wildlife here, you know, she is a perfect solution to insects in the garden. Um, very, very happy to see these guys uh, when they're around because she does, she likes to eat crickets and ladybugs, well, not necessarily ladybugs, but all sorts of different types of insects to keep our, our habitats really healthy. And this bird obviously is, is also native yeah, she's native to San Diego. Um, they do like to eat rodents, but she loves, as you just saw, crickets and other small insects like that. And they'll, they're pretty much opportunistic. They'll eat whatever they can get their little talons on. And bugs and gardens are an easy target. So, Ms. Smarty Plants, you've brought us into the actual conservation garden. Yes, welcome to our retrofit house. This is uh, probably our uh, signature exhibit and the reason why the garden was established. Yeah, back in uh, the late 1990s when we had our other big drought here in California. Yes, we're having almost the exact type of situation. We're going to be going into some mandatory water restrictions, a level two drought. And this demonstrates for you the proper use of drought tolerant plants, mm -hmm drip irrigation system, okay. the proper use of mulch, and the amazing part is, over to my left, you'll see a typical backyard here in San Diego. Well, come and show us. One of the beauties is, is that this type of planting and irrigation, drip irrigation, will save you 40% of your outdoor water bill. Wow. So that's a wonderful tip. Another one is to cut down those showers, even if we cut them down by five minutes. You can save about, uh, 20 gallons per person a day. So 3 million people in San Diego times 20 gallons, 60 million a day. Right. And of course, all of this brings us back around to conservation and preservation of our wild San Diego, right? Well, our wild San Diego, you're seeing it, you're living it, because what we're doing is we're creating a healthy, habitat, a sustainable habitat for our wildlife. And I'd like to just take a minute and thank Mariah and Sherry from the Living Coast Discovery Center for the efforts that they do in keeping our San Diego wild. Absolutely.